Hey there guys, if you want to support the channel and get access to our exclusive Discord community of Ruler School, which provides uh, tons of great community content, including exclusive game nights, uh, giveaways, and tournaments, go ahead and check out the link down below and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you guys so much, and enjoy the video. Hey there guys, DMO73 here, back with another feature match. Today I am showing off uh, the fair Umir combo deck that was uh, kind of created by Eponk of Team Ogre and played at Worlds. Uh, a lot of people have kind of been asking about it. As w And then Tyler is playing um, Red Green Prissia um, with the aggro variant, but also the, the one that uses Mary Bella a lot. Um, so the whole idea is that you can go really aggressive with your creatures, or you can quickly ramp into a Mariabella if necessary and just kind of control the game from there. Um, very, very interesting. It did, uh, it was played at Worlds. I think the, his very to the list is one of the ones that top aided. He's playing one of the ones that top aided, so we'll see how this goes. No, typically the Umir combo um, doesn't have a too bad time against Prissia, especially if they go the aggro route because it can reset its life to 40 with Lumia. Um, it's just a matter of seeing if I can make that happen today. So before the camera started rolling, I won the die roll, so I will be on the play, as I am forced to do so. So we'll just see how this goes. Now the, the main concern here for the fair deck is just that if it doesn't combo off before Prissia can get all that damage in, then it's just kind of out of luck. Um, which is just something that actually happens, you know, you see he already has that flame horse in his hand, which means Prissia can have swiftness, and he's got the um, Energize, which helps make him be able to do judgment for with Prissia faster. So, his opening hand there looks kind of weak. A uh, couple of flame horses, a couple of sacred elves, and a spinning myths. Um, I'll play the turn one sacred elf and pass the turn. I could have played the turn one... Um, uh, Spirit Caller Elf and got this Elf token and then tried to play Sacred Elf as well. Um, but against an aggro deck, I don't really want to be resting my stuff turn one because he could drop a turn one Prissia, or sorry, a turn one Sylvia, which would really mess up my combo. So trying to play it a little bit safer. Place that Sacred Elf and says pass. Drop for turn, call for stone. Spirit Caller Elf comes out. Attempt to get two tokens off of it, or a token elf token off of it. This is essentially just turns into a free sacred elf with fairer because I can rest them both to create a token or to untap a stone, and then I'll attempt to play a divine bird and recover a stone, and then try to play a another sacred elf. Um, so big turn of ramp there, and the main reason why I wanted the uh, divine bird is just because if he did play a Sylvia or something else like that, he would have to choose to like possibly lock that down and. We'll have to see what happens. Mainly I just wanted to put a lot of creatures on the board to help form a defensive wall. The Divine Bird is also nice because it does have flying, so if he does decide to Judgment with Prissia, I can kind of half the damage if he does chooses to God Art. Place that Sylvia. my Sacred Elf, making my Divine Bird unable to block for the turn, which is fine. And uses a Sacred Elf to try to kill my other Spirit Caller. I'll block with my Sacred Elf so neither of them will die. And he passes the turn. Go to me. So at this point on turn three, the nice thing is because I have the Sacred Elf and the Spirit Caller Elf, I will be able to drop a five drop. I just need to see what is in my hand. Thankfully, I do have that Captain Hook. I'm just deciding about which direction I kind of want to play him in um, to make this the most appropriate play. So I'll pay four, and then recover my Water Stone and rest it again for another water to play the Captain Hook. Captain Hook's gonna come out, and at this point, I'm gonna choose to, I can either hit one stone or both of his creatures. Um, 
I think probably hitting both of his creatures is probably the better call here because he is only at two stones. So if he does decide to judgment, um, then uh, he like wouldn't be able to play anything kind of to follow up if he did want to God's Art. And I still have the Divine Bird to be able to block it. So I'm pretty safe there. Um, this way he also has to try to waste a turn kind of um, committing to play replaying his creatures if he wants to. And now that I have two blockers, a Sylvia is not terribly um, concerning. I can block with a Divine Bird and draw a card. I can, you know, kind of wait. And if he swings with the Sylvia and doesn't have a backup for it, then Captain Hook will just kill it on the crackback. Trying to decide which direction he wants to go here. Does decide to replay the Sylvia. Spends the coin to play Little Red. Calls the stone. Gives swiftness and flying both to Little Red. Attempt to swing in and tries to kill my sacred elf while locking down my captain hook. Seems kind of weird. Uh, I, I get it. He doesn't want me to get to six next turn. Um, still seems a little suboptimal. I'm going to go ahead and choose to block that. Um, and then this forces him to kind of waste even more time trying to kill my sacred elf so I take even less damage. Um, the sequencing there could have been a little bit different, but. I don't think it necessarily matters too much. Call for a stone. Deciding which direction I kind of want to go here. Do I want to play the Faylee to be able to um, do things, or do I want to go ahead and just play the second Captain Hook? And I do. I just decide to play the second Captain Hook. So this is great for me because now he can't possibly judgment next turn. Sure, he's going to draw two cards, but he'll be at a maximum total of two will to be able to do anything with it. And that's if he judgments. So pretty mediocre for Sylvia. And especially since, or Prissia, especially since I'm going to be able to kill that Sylvia there and I'm still at 4,000 life. Feels pretty comfortable. And that little red is just a 3-3 three, three right now and at max it's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, Tyler's in a pretty weird spot. He's staring down two 10-10s. He's got to be able to put stuff on board, and he needs to try to figure out exactly how to also get damage, because if he waits too long, he knows I'll just have the stones to be able to combo off too. So he has to be really careful here. Plays the Sacred Elf. And chooses to spend his turn putting as many creatures on board as possible. He's got the Flame Horse as well. And even though the little red um, could have attacked because it had flying, he chooses not to. Uh, main reasoning for that is because he doesn't want to um, risk it getting killed on the crackback. So, like, yeah, he'd do four damage, but then Hook would just kill him. So I'm going to pay 300 life with that Machina that I just played um, to try to play a Faylee after playing the Machina. Uh, he does go ahead and decide to Severing Winds that, which is the right play, because if he didn't, then I could just instant speed make a Hook token next turn, um, which would just really punish him pretty hard. Um, I could just get rid of two creatures immediately back to his hand and just finish, finish things off. Swing in for 10 to at least get some damage on there. 
do have a Ferris command in my hand, uh, as well as a Melfi. Tyler's debating whether or not to take the 10, or I think maybe block with something. He has to decide to take it. Take him down to 30. Now, I'm not terribly concerned here, because unless he has rapid growth, um, even with God's Arting and stuff, there's a, not a real, like... There's a real chance that he might not just be able to... Just can't kill me, just doesn't have enough damage. Um, he is going to be able to God's Art, that's not a concern, um, because we know the next stone is a Prissia stone, so it's going to cycle. Um, he's just trying to draw into a Rapid Growth, because if he doesn't hit a Rapid Growth, then it's just... Um, and it's just over, um, because he just he can't possibly deal 3,700 damage with me, uh, at least unless he chooses to um, cycle a creature and get lucky uh, when he has the God's Art. Um, but he's also done something weird here in the fact that he um, might potentially not be able to get the full God Art here based on his stone. So when he swings off his first stone, if he happens to hit his basic green, which most of these Mariabella decks run, um, one basic green, one basic red, then he can't God's Art because he'll have access to double green. This is why judgmenting is usually best to do with your uh, Sacred Elf, um, so then you have access to these double stones more frequently. Manages to hit the red-green, so that's not a big deal. Um, he's going to go ahead and do the God's Art and recover. So 12 damage to me coming at me in the air. Now all of his creatures for the rest of the turn have flying and swiftness. Um, so now it's a big trick of whether or not he can finish me off. Uh, Prissy is going to be doing 12, so he's going to deal 1,300 damage to me um, with the other creatures. Currently on board, he's dealing 600 extra damage, so he's got to do 700 more. It's a question of whether or not he can make that stick. Especially since he's only going to get one, potentially one more will um, to do it with. So I think actually even with one more will, there's no way he can possibly uh, do that damage. He does have that lightning strike in hand, which would put me down to two. Um, the problem becomes the crackback is so intense. On board right now, I have 2,900 damage. Um, so if I even have any form of pump spell or fairer, can just pump up one of my elves he just dies so he is going to attempt to hit the cycle trigger here now if he hits a Mary Bella it's game over because it'll be a thousand more damage and he's fine but unfortunately he hits Ferris call uh, or Ferris spell doesn't do anything for him um, takes me down to seven uh, he has no will left and he has to pass the turn does have that Mary Bell in his hand but unfortunately because he didn't hit one off the top of the deck that's just kind of game over for this one So I'm going to pay three life at the end of the turn to flash in the Melfi. Um, he is, you know, tapped out, so there's no reason to. He can't, like, lightning strike me or anything else. And it is at the end of the turn, so no more combat happens. I'll go ahead and Inheritance during the upkeep with that Divine Bird I just top decked. Maybe drawn to something fun like the Umir combo was my thought of if I can get the Umir, then I can, like, show you guys. Um, but instead, what I'm going to do is the other the deck's other win con, which is just to do Ferris Command um, for seven easily. All my guys become massive, and uh, the game is just over there. So that's at least six uh, six thousand damage on board um, on top of their natural stat bases, and it's just over. So we move on to game two. I'm going to be on the draw. Let's see how this goes. Maybe Prissia gets a little bit more aggressive. Um, one of the things to note about the deck is if Tyler does manage to get a Mariabella very, very quickly, it's going to be very hard for me to establish because um, being able to ping uh, my mana creatures, um, like my Spirit Caller Elves to be able to recover stones or my Sacred Elves, a single ping from Mariabella just kills them. Um, so it becomes very hard to ramp into the early game combo if that doesn't happen. And you see he already has a Mariabella in hand, which is no good. Um, he actually had two, but he doesn't really need it. Um, decides to keep uh, the Mary Bella and I think lightning strike shipping away the rapid growth the other Mary Bella and then something else draws into another lightning strike so he's got plenty of burn in his pocket and he does get that sacred out for the turn one play 
passes to me. Call for that first stone. Play the Spirit Collar Elf. The reason for the Spirit Collar Elf is here because I am on the draw. Um, I can play a little bit more defensively here, and I have the Melfi in hand, so during his turn I can rush the two creatures to recover a stone with Fairer, and then um, flash in the Melfi. So if he chooses to go less aggressive, I can still put in the Melfi, which is helpful. One for a Sacred Elf. And then choose to pass the turn. I'm going to recover the stone, spend the stone, and then flash in the Melfi at the end of the turn. So going into my turn, I'm technically at four will. It's a little bit low, um, but I can at least try to make a play there. You see I do have the Captain Hook in hand. I can play the Sacred Elf. Um, can play another Sacred Elf, try to ramp ahead. Uh, if I get lucky and all of these guys survive, then I can drop the Umir combo. Um, the problem is uh, he's got those lightning strikes, so one of them is going to die for sure. Um, but then he can definitely play a Mariabella next turn uh, and then get at least one stone off of it, um, potentially even more, because he'll get the stone, and then he can call a stone with Prissia. So easily curved out here in the first few turns to make it better and then he top decks fiery fox which just makes it even harder for me um, because what can happen here is he'll play four to play the mariabella he'll get the firestone um most likely uh, so that he can get a burn trigger as well as give mariabella swiftness and hit me for some damage chooses to grab the windstone which i think is an interesting play maybe because i have the cancel stuff in my hand and so he wants to maybe be able to stop severing wins if he plays a second card here that's probably the better option to be honest calls the stone now he's got uh swiftness and flying on mary bella and he's got the burn and the blast counter and then he's got two will to be able to play a fiery fox so now he's going to be able to get another stone on my turn if he needs to um, which just makes mary bella have two burn clat counters and three uh breeze counters um so at that point it's pretty much just game over I do have the Captain Hook in my hand, but it's still so suboptimal. Um, he has the will to be able to play the Mary Bella again next turn. Um, plus, at the same time, having the Fiery Fox, he can just, uh, at instant speed, sack a stone, draw a card, uh, and then um, kill my uh, Hook with his Mary Bella um, before it even bounces back to my hand. So I essentially paid five will to do nothing. Don't have the severing wins anyway to be able to stop him. Um, swings in for 10, I take the 10, go down to 30. Draw for my turn. Hoping to draw into maybe something a little bit better, but unfortunately I'm only at six will. Um, so even if I had the Umir, I wouldn't be able to do anything with it. I don't have enough will to cast Ferris Command. I don't have enough will. I could cast the Faily, but there's nothing really worth cloning on my side of the field right now. Um, I could cast the Yggdrasil, but again, there's nothing really worth it, and there's so much damage staring me down next turn, as well as uh, Mariabella being able to just become a behemoth um, with an, at least two, if not three, more stone calls in the next span of the next turn to where nothing I play is really going to resolve or have any kind of... Uh, possibility so at that point I just scoop the game and say yep that Mary Bella sticks there's nothing really I can do and we go to game three so this just goes to show that like even outside of Prissia um, herself Mary Bella she does have definitely has a lot of options and Mary Bella with fiery fox is very very good especially against control and combo decks um, if we just don't have anything to be able to combo with or anything else like that we just are in a really bad spot i do decide to ship away the captain hook here probably just so that i can have more stuff um but i don't know if that necessarily was the best option I do have the farius summon there which is nice um so we'll have to see which kind of direction tyler wants to take things mary bella worked out for him really well last game so let's see if he tries to do it again 
for the first turn, Divine Bird. Unfortunately, no form of ramp in my first turn, which is really not good for me. Place that first uh, first little red, calls a stone, gives it swiftness and flying, pokes me for four, go down to 36. I have a Melfi there, which is nice, um, but unfortunately nothing to quick, you know, chant speed it with. He's gonna go ahead and use Lightning Strike, take me down to 31. Place another little red. Uh, Calls of Stone gives it swiftness and flying. Um, so now they're both 5-5, five, five, so swing for 10 total. Um, I'm going to try to block the first one uh, with Divine Bird. I'll draw a card off of it, and then I go ahead and say, well, I can at least stop the damage by flashing in Melfi uh, and try to block with it so that it's, you know, nobody dies. But then he has Rapid Growth, which just makes it so his doesn't die at all, and I still lose the Melfi. So I go down pretty hard there, especially, you know, I could have been at four, which would have let me play uh, the Yggdrasil. And then I could have possibly come back here. Um, unfortunately, it's going to be very hard to come back at this point. I do have another Melfi in hand, which is nice. And I do have the Captain Hook. It's just a matter of if I can survive long enough. Call for a stone. Gives swiftness to that one. Place the Sylvia. So now even more aggression. It's me for six with the Sylvia, making my uh, Sacred Elf not able to block. It's me for five. It's me for five. I take all the damage, go down to uh, six, 15 after all of those swings. And then at the end of the turn, I'm gonna go ahead and flash in the Melfi. Cover. I was thinking about flashing in another Melfi before the upkeep, but I decide against it. Uh, I'll pay five. I'll have the Captain Hook, and what I will do is I will put the Sylvia and the um, Little Red back in my hand, or back in his hand. At least have two blockers here, um, so then I'm pretty safe. Oh, I think I was thinking was about casting the far a summon uh, instead. So I get the two spirit color elves. So now I have a little blocker wall for when he tries to play the Prissia or the Sylvia again if he tries to. Um, the problem is with Prissia, uh, I have no way to stop the flyers. So he literally can just flip over Prissia here if he has Flame Horse in his hand and just kill me with the God Art. Um, he chooses to use the Flame Horse though on. Um, on uh, Little Red, gives it swiftness and flying. She's now 7-7 um, seven, seven because of the, or an 8-8 because of the, or yeah, 8-8 eight, because eight of the stones. Um, and then he chooses to pay four and uses actually just finishes me off in a very cool way, which is Prissia's Leap. So she's gonna not rest and she gets to attack twice. So being an 8-8, eight, eight, she hits me twice and there's 16 damage and that's the end of the game. So. Kudos to Tyler, a uh, very interesting way to pilot his Prissia list, and, and sorry I didn't get to show you guys the full combo. Deck lists for both lists will be up later this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time, this is DMO73, signing off.